cloudy days like this are good for finding woolly adelgid in the trees because of the good contrast. The best time to look for woolly adelgid is in the winter, specifically from January to March, because that's when the hemlock trees are doing most of their photosynthesizing. The energies that are created from photosynthesis are what the woolly adelgids feed off of, so they're most common. It's important while you're searching for the adelgid to ask for permission, because that's just common courtesy. For example, Hey ma'am, I just saw that you have lots of hemlocks on this beautiful property of yours and I was wondering if I could search it for research's sake for the woolly adelgid, which is an invasive species. Yes, please, of course. Great, thank you. I'll let you know how it goes. Thank you for asking. No problem. It is important to initially scan the area you're about to um, search for these woolly adelgids and each tree to scan the overall health of the tree. And you see, you're looking for maybe discoloration, easy hints that there are woolly adelgids in this tree. So discoloration, scarcity of greenery or branches, dead branches, anything like that. So this tree looks, this looks good. It's a good color, dark green. From April to August, it is easiest to transfer the ovi sacs from infested areas to non-infested areas. So check yourself before you move from one area to the next so that you do not carry them. This is a good time to take down bird feeders so that the birds have less of a chance of transferring the ovi sacs. The three key characteristics of identifying a hemlock are the drooping top, which is um, prominent in this young tree, as well as the two race stripes that are on the bottom right there of the needles and the fact that the canopy or branches start low to the ground. You can easily tell the difference between a white pine and a hemlock between, because a white pine needles are significantly longer than a hemlock's and they don't have the racing stripes on the bottom. You can tell this isn't a hemlock because it does have stripes on the back but the needles are, grow all the way around this and not just on the sides. Hemlocks generally grow around riparian zones, as you can see. Here in this open field, it is a prime area to look for woolly adelgid bugs because the wind would get funneled down and go, and the seeds, or the eggs from them, would go into these trees, and that's where they like to be. And also, all this underbrush is a prime place for birds that carry the eggs around too. Another good place to look for a hemlock are along the sides of corridors such as power lines or roads like this one I'm standing right now. When examining hemlocks along roadsides, be cautious of cars and use common sense when avoiding dangers along the road. Identify a hemlock tree and then you find a branch at the end and you take the last meter of it, which is three feet, and about this much, and you bend it back and look at the undersides and look along the twig and actual wood, but not the needle. You look right at the bases of the leaves, and you're looking for a, a wispy white egg sac type of thing that's pretty small. So I think that these are all clear, but that's what you try to do. I'm going to tell you how to look for woolly adelgids on a hemlock tree. First, you find a hemlock tree, like this one. Then, you search about three feet from the end of the branch. So from here on, you pick it up and you look on the twig part of the branch for any white fluffy things. Um, and those will most likely be woolly adelgids. 